This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Um, this lecture, well, I've headed up the chapter, The Impact of Financing. And what it relates to is this. Um, we spent time in earlier chapters setting up the cash flows for um, investment decisions. Uh, and then we've tended to discount at the weighted average cost of capital when we spent time checking that earlier. Uh, but I did say at the time that the problem is, or could be, that it's only valid to discount at the weighted average cost of capital if it's going to stay constant. And the problem is that if we're changing the gearing of the company, uh, we're taking on a new project, we're raising finance to finance that project, and if that involves a change of gearing, then the cost of capital is going to change. It gives us a problem. And so that's really what we're talking about here. And the first bit, desperately important, is Medigliani and Miller, uh, which in the earlier financial management exam, uh, in the lectures, I spent some time explaining Medigliani and Miller, albeit in the earlier exam, you were expected to understand what they said, but you weren't expected to do any calculations. In this exam, you are expected to do calculations. Now, I'm not going to go on and on about Medigliani and Miller to the extent I did in the previous exam. If you're at all uh, unsure, then go back and um, listen to those lectures. Uh, but Medigliani and Miller, there are two basic things they said. First of all, that if there's no tax involved, then in fact it didn't matter how a company raised finance because the weighted average cost of capital would stay the same. Sorry, I'm talking about Medigliani and Miller here. Uh, as I say, if you want illustrations, look back or listen to the um, relevant lectures for the earlier financial management exam. But they said without tax, the weighted average cost of capital wouldn't change. All right, debt's cheaper, but equity becomes more expensive because there's more risk. The net effect, weighted average stays the same, and it was therefore irrelevant how they raised finance. Much more importantly, though, for this exam, uh, given in real life that our taxes they said, Medigliani and Miller, they said that uh, tax makes debt borrowing even cheaper. As you saw in the earlier lectures, debt is interest is allowable. So it makes debt borrowing even cheaper than before. And as a result, the more debt you have, the higher the gearing. Well, the weighted average cost of capital will fall. And therefore, a company should be as highly geared as possible. Now, that's what they said. And in the earlier exam, that was about it. There were no, no arithmetic. Uh, however, in this exam, there is a bit of arithmetic. And Medigliani and Miller, when there's tax involved, they did come up with a formula, which you'll see typed in the notes, and is given on the formula sheet, that formula that KE equals KEI plus 1 minus T. KEI minus KD VD over VE. Now, I'm not going to write down what um, all the symbols mean because I've typed it in the notes. You've got it in front of you. But it's look, um, this is a formula of how the cost of equity will change as the gearing changes. The more gearing there is in a company, the more risky it is for shareholders, therefore the higher the return they require. Well, KE tells us what the cost of equity will be in a geared company. It's equal to KEI, which is what the cost would be if there was no gearing at all, plus, well, it's going to be higher when there is gearing because of more risk. And so uh, the amount it goes up by, 1 minus the tax rate, 
The difference between uh, the cost of equity if there's no gearing and KD, the required return by debt holders, or the pre-tax cost of debt times, well, the gearing ratio, effectively, the market value of debt over the market value of equity. Now, I'll illustrate how we use the formula. In fact, it's very rarely relevant in the exam. I can only remember once in recent years. And I'll mention afterwards, there is actually an alternative you could have used to get the same answer. Uh, regardless, look at example one with me. London PLC is an ungeared company with a cost of equity of 15%. No gearing at all, shells require 15 They propose raising debt at 8% pre-tax. So that's the debt lenders required return. Uh, they've estimated that the resulting gearing ratio, and you're always told how the gearing's defined, but here the ratio of debt to equity will be 0.4. The rate of tax is 30%, and we're required to calculate two things. First of all, very easy. He says, what's the cost of equity? No, sorry, not very easy. What am I talking about? A, what's the cost of equity after raising the debt? We're going to need to use the formula. The cost of equity, it'll be a geared company, so the cost of equity will go up with the gearing. It'll be equal to the cost of equity if there's no gearing, 15%, plus 1 minus the tax rate. Uh, the tax rate is 30%, 0.3, so 1 minus is 70%, 0.7, times the um, ungeared cost of equity, 15%, minus the return to investors, the pre-tax cost of debt, 8, times the gearing ratio, debt to equity. Well, here, debt divided by equity, we're told, is 0.4. Uh, and so, what will the cost of equity have gone up to? It'd be 15 plus uh, 0.7 times 7 times 0.4, 1.96. The cost of equity will go up to 16.96%. All right, so not hard. Uh, part B. Part B. Uh, says what is the weighted average cost of capital before and after we raise the debt? Well, before raising the debt, it was ungeared, and so the weighted average cost of capital was simply the cost of equity, which was 15%. Uh, what is it after raising uh, uh, the finance, after changing the gearing? Uh, well, as far as equity is concerned, we've got equity debt. Uh, because the gearing is debt as a proportion of equity, it means for every 100 equity, the debt is 0.4 or 40. And so every 140 total market value, equity is 100, debt's 40. Uh, the costs of the two individually. Well, we've worked out the cost of equity uh, went up to 16.96%. Uh, the cost of debt, uh, be careful, 8% uh, is the pre-tax cost. That is the return to... Uh, the investor, and therefore the cost of the company, well, we've no choice but to assume it's irredeemable, which in fact Medidiani and Miller do in their proofs. But if it's 8% pre tax and there's tax at 30%, it'll be 5.6% after tax. 
Uh, the weighted average is normal, so um, equity 100 out of 140, debt 40 out of 140. Gives us twelve point one 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 point one point six at thirteen point seven one per cent. And there we are. So as you'd expect. Uh, as you introduce gearing, the cost of equity goes up because it's more risky. But according to Medigliani and Miller, and this is their formula obviously, uh, the weighted average cost of capital falls. You've got higher equity, but you've got more cheap debt. The weighted average will fall. The higher the gearing, the better. So there we are, that's how we use the formula. I'll say again, that formula is given on the formula sheet. I can only remember one exam where it was actually used, but that's not to say it couldn't be again. And, now I don't want to confuse anybody, you could actually have done this question uh, without that formula. Now it would get a lot messier, but what you could have done is you could have said, ah, if they're currently wanting 15%, what must the beta be? We'd assume the debt was the risk-free. And so uh, if we know risk-free is 8, if we know the cost of uh, equity is 15, uh, we could work backwards, like we did in the capital asset pricing model chapter, and we could work out the beta. And since it was ungeared, there's no gearing at all, the beta of the equity would be the same as the asset beta. Uh, we then um, are going to raise debt, bring in gearing. Well, although the asset beta would stay the same, that we'd have calculated, the equity beta would be higher. We could use the asset beta formula. That would give us the beta of the equity, and that beta of equity, that would give us the new cost of equity, and we've been carrying this before. Now clearly that would take longer, but I don't know, if you understood me, it might be an idea to have a go yourself and check you can do it, uh, because in fact the capital asset formula comes from Medigliani and Miller. The two do end up giving the same answer. Anyway, completely unnecessary here, but it's, it'd be a good exercise. Revise for you a bit of the area. Uh, two other things uh, mentioned, um, but only very briefly here. I'm not over worried, and neither should you be. Uh, but Medigliani and Miller certainly say we should raise as much debt as possible for the reasons I've explained. Uh, but they do make a lot of assumptions which aren't uh, completely valid in real life, uh, you know, in their proofs. And so two other theories to be aware of. Pecking order theory simply says a company should raise money in the easiest way. You know, if they need money, raise it in the easiest possible way. As I've written, the law of least effort. And therefore, uh, the first way you'll try and raise money is use retained earnings. It's easy, it's there. You don't need to issue shares of anything. Use retained earnings. Obviously, there's only a limited amount available. If you need more money, um, issue debt finance. Effectively, take a loan. It's not much more work involved, but getting a loan is easier than issuing shares. Uh, and only then, if you still need more money, then issue new shares, raise new equity. Uh, finally, static trade-off theory. Uh, again, is something I did mention in the um, earlier paper. But m, &M uh, I've already said, uh, what they say and their formulae do rely on 
assumptions like having a perfect market and things. Um, static trade-off is in a sense more practical. It says, okay, more gearing will give a higher cost of equity. Uh, the weighted average cost of capital will change. But, although we accept it will change, we can't really predict how it will change. But if it's going to change, there has to be a minimum weighted average somewhere. And the company wants to get to that minimum cost of capital. And so it says the company should aim for whatever level of gearing gives the minimum weighted average cost of capital and then stick to it. But they say there's no way of predicting it. It'd be very much trial and error. Raising more finance, raise some debts and see if the weighted average goes down. If it does, great. Next time, raise some more debt. Does it go down? If it does, great. But if there comes a time when the weighted average starts to go up, ah, we've hit the minimum. But as I said, it's trial and error. So no arithmetic involved in either of those. Uh, but the middle on in Miller formula. Just to be safe, make sure you can use it. All right, I'm splitting this lecture into two, even though that was fairly short. Uh, because uh, the next bit still relates to Modigliani and Miller, but is very, very common in the exam indeed.